All right, everybody, this is Ross. We did a trial this year of different types of mustard. And I thought I would talk to you guys today about what are some of my favorite mustards. We were trying to find really some alternatives and maybe some additions to salads. Um, some things that we could add in there to really give ourselves maybe a little bit more flavor in our salads or even uh, maybe a little bit of texture. But also I think more importantly is to find an alternative to something that's more difficult to grow. Usually mustards are something that can withstand the summer heat. Um, here in this climate, at least in the Philadelphia area, it can be quite difficult uh, as we have a shorter spring and then a short fall. Our summer, it, the heat comes on pretty quick. And as you can see, some of the stuff already has bolted. You know, today's only uh, May 15th and I actually am gonna plant my beans. So I figured before I take some of this stuff out, um, we should evaluate what's here and figure out if there's anything we're going to continue to grow next year. Now, one of the mustards here that really impressed me is not even really a mustard. Um, at least I thought it was going to be a mustard, but it's, uh, it's not. It's, I guess it's called Ethiopian blue mustard, and I got it from, I think, Artisan Seeds. But it's more like a kale. It really is a, a brassica that puts out these leaves that really tender, um, quite flavorful, not overpowering. It's a nice alternative to kale. And in fact, I think this is, in my opinion, a better kale. I could eat these guys, assuming they didn't bolt. Um, I could eat these guys in a salad of just that. And I know a kale salad for some people is pretty intense, uh, difficult probably for a lot of people to to enjoy, I know, I know a lot of people love it, obviously, but this, I think, is a nice alternative. It bolted, obviously, rather quickly, which part of the reason why that had happened, I think, um, is because we've, uh, we had plastic over top of these plants in the early spring to extend the season, and I think we warmed these plants up and the soil here up a little bit too much too soon, and a lot of these plants just ended up bolting. So that that was no good. I would like to see next year what ends up happening, or maybe I'll plant these guys in the fall once again. But this is a really good vegetable. It's Ethiopian blue spinach. I'm a big fan. Um, even the stems are really quite tender. Everything about it is really good. Um, however, though, in terms of the actual mustards we have here, or I should say more traditional mustards, we have... Uh, this one here from Seeds of Italy called Senape Bianco. It has flowered very quickly, faster than even this Ethiopian blue, uh, blue mustard. And uh, it's very, very intense right now. Um, because obviously I think it has flowered. No. Um, personally, I just don't think it's that great. Yeah, there's the fire coming in, that spice coming in. I don't know if I'd really recommend growing this one again. Maybe I did something wrong. Uh, as I said, you know, things got too warm. Perhaps if I didn't do that, this would be a better choice. At least here and what I've done this year, I don't know if I'm, I'm probably not gonna grow it again. This other guy here is called the uh, Curly Frills Mustard. And I really like this one. Um, first off, it's got the really nice texture. You could add this to salads. Kind of like my endive here on my left. It's a pretty good uh, comparison, I find. But I even might even more enjoy the Curly Frills mustard over this endive. I find they're equally, equally easy to grow. You just plant the seeds in the spring, uh, early spring, and they'll end up producing something for you. See, the endive has got more of a bitterness to it. This curly frills is like fire. It's really like mustard. Like, when I eat this, I really feel like I'm eating mustard, like actual mustard from like seeds and like a legit strong mustard flavor. So there's a difference in flavor, difference in texture, but they're similar in that curliness and they can really, I think, 
do well with uh, absorbing flavor from different things. Um, a good addition to salad for sure. Would I eat it by itself? Probably not. Now the other one here is the red giant mustard. And this is the last one. This is actually quite mild and it really resembles more along the lines of a lettuce. This is one that my friend Chris recommended to me. He's been raving about it for years. More mild, but it is quite intense, that mustard flavor. So um, it really depends on your liking, but what Chris has told me, and he doesn't live that far away, this red giant mustard will go all year. It doesn't stop, doesn't bolt. It's indestructible. Um, so this is a great one here if you're looking for something like that. In terms of eating these though, um, I gotta go with arugula and spinach. You know, <laughs> I gotta go with um, probably this, this you know, curly frills or golden frills or whatever, whatever it's called, or the endive as an addition to the salad. And then this, um, this Ethiopian blue mustard here is like a really nice addition to kale, or alternative to kale. So for me, I'm, uh, those are my kind of my thoughts on this little trial here. Maybe you guys have found something, I hope you found something interesting about this video, these different varieties here that I tried. Um, and maybe this will inspire you guys to grow uh, one of these next year. I think I would uh, probably recommend you at least grow something from this, you know, Just help you expand some knowledge, maybe learn something new. Maybe you can find something to do with these guys in the kitchen. We'll see you guys soon, all right? Thank you for watching. Uh, take care. Hit that subscribe button for me.